Hello, producer Dan here with a quick little message before we begin. Uh, we just want to express our thanks for your ongoing patience uh, while the main schedule is paused. Um, we do have some good news. We hope to resume our main channel episodes on the 11th of April, so a little bit longer to wait. But in the meantime, please enjoy this Patreon special. Do you know anybody that, any enemies you might have had, somebody that might want to hurt her? No, I mean, we're, we don't know where she is. I mean, the only thing we can think is that maybe she went out running and someone snatched her. What about um, in the, like, the parking lot area? I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard, any, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? I, I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like, they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if it's the same person or not. So that's how we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Are you okay, sir? I, I think I need to sit down. Okay. You hurt this girl. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You hurt that girl. Hello and welcome to I Could Murder a Minnesota. My name is Dan and <laughs> no joking. Hello, welcome back to another I Could Murder a Minnesota episode number 52. We're back in Boston Sound. We're back with the Minnesotes. Lads, how are you doing today? I can't complain. Um Me neither, actually. Yeah. I had a haircut, I feel good, I feel fresh, and I feel raring. Brilliant. I feel all of those things as well, too. Get your own feelings. What do you what else, what do you else do you feel? Uh, it was cold outside. Not um, feel is that how you feel? feel jovial, feel what jovial, jovial, no jovial, shalom. Um, this case, thank you for all your lovely comments about the true crime times. Hard to say, um, we enjoyed not, doing it, huh? It's not hard to say, no, the true crime. How do you times. say joy, <laughs> joy, jo jo you're just bitter because jovial, we chose Ben's name, yeah. You you failed the test, Dan, when you picked the name. Sorry about I that. I was surprised, yeah, yeah. But pleasantly surprised. It's a great name. Yeah. Is it? Catchy. Catchy. People seem to like it. Lots of great comments, as you were saying. Not about the name. Uh, <laughs> not, I don't think any of them actually mentioned the name. No. 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 But the cases that were picked, some said that yours is more of a Minnesota forced into it, whereas mine was actually more cases. Like, yeah. But <laughs> Did someone say that? Yeah, a lot of people. Who? Um, it's mainly on our Discord, which we'll tell you all about. There's no Discord anymore i have to delete it just in case spencer or it and hurt his feelings we'll be back with one of those again very soon we're gonna be doing one of those every month but we are back with the minnesodes and today is the creepy case of stephen mcdaniel and this is requested by georgina rowe so thank you very much for the request georgina hey georgie so this case first came to my attention from the amazing channel uh, jcs jim can't swim where he dissects the interrogation footage he actually describes this as one of the most fascinating interrogations to be seen by the public it is the one that sticks out for me from that case, um, from that series. Um, we know, all know JCS has had some YouTube beef recently with mm. YouTube. Big time beef. But you're just telling me Benny's coming back. They're working on an exit exit strategy, which for, shouldn't be. Oh, he's coming back. Yeah, they were working on an exit strategy. Oh, they were. But they've now come to terms and made some sort of human agreement with YouTube. Oh, actually. Yeah, it's wow. all over Twitter, man. It's all over Twitter. A human agreement. Yeah, they said they, they were speaking to their machine-like uh, support team. I'm not going to slag off YouTube. I mean, this is Patreon. Yeah. I want to hear more about JCS. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to get there. <clears throat> so they, uh, yeah, they they've put a few threatening tweets out there saying we're going to we're working on an exit strategy. We're going to leave, and uh, just just was uh, loading the car up and saw another tweet saying, you know, we've finally spoken to the support team in person. We're coming back get our videos put back up because they've removed a load of his videos including this Stephen McDaniel one so because yeah, I watched this and doing the research for this particular case hmm how bizarre how bizarre how bizarre jealous speaks righteous sister Cena says funky how bizarre how bizarre how bizarre how bizarre so yeah, if you haven't seen it, JCS Criminal Psychology, very, very good YouTube channel. Highly recommend it. Anyone who's into true crime, I think will we'll fall in love with this mm -hmm. particular one. I really like the um, Stephanie Lazarus one. I won't say anymore, but it's very, very interesting. So highly recommend going over there. And hopefully all his old content will be back up there soon. Is that the lady with the facial expressions? Yes. Yes. Can you do them uh, for me? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Again, obviously cut that. But yeah, so highly recommend them. But anyway, this case, it was when I saw it in the polls, I was very happy to see it there. I think I put the deciding vote for this to go over the line because we get one vote. We can't rig them. But I, I've got to use my deciding vote and it's like 50 50. Click that one, end the poll. Because I had to do the research. And it yeah. would look bad on us if we'd done the research. And then the other one won. Yeah. I mean, you've seen the JCS one. Mm -hmm. I think you might have even linked me to this one as well. A couple of words just to sum up this case, Ben. Spooky geezer. Um, I've got more words. Uh, bizarre human. Another. Why are you wasting it on human and geezer? Truly unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots going on in my head right now. Relatable. No, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Like looking at mirror. <laughs> His interview, wasn't it, that went viral ages ago. Mm. That was the first thing I saw. And yeah, we'll get Born right to. into it. So I'm going to go through a little bit of the history here, then get into the day of the crime itself. Um, Stephen McDaniel was born in 1989 in Lilburn, Georgia. His parents were Mark and Glenda, who both worked in a factory day and night. He also had four sisters, but they weren't named anywhere. Funny names. The McDaniel sisters, good band name. Mm, I don't know if I'd see him. You don't have to. I don't want to be forced to see him, Ben. How, How many sisters are there? Four. You got a drummer? A bassist, a guitarist, and lead vocals. Pals Makes sense. Pals rhythm guitar, maybe she has a tambourine. Uh, McDaniel was reportedly considered a loner. <laughs> what are you fucking looking at me for? Because you're sitting opposite me. Loner? To be fair, Ben. He was obsessed with medieval chainmail, which he would sometimes wear to class. It's never going to go down well, is it? Who's that clinking in the back row? It's McDaniel. Oh, I'm a bit hot. Why are you wearing chainmail to class, McDaniel? Go to Lost Property. But it smells like piss in there. Go to Lost Property. You imagine you're a bit of a loner, you're wearing chain mail. I can imagine it. It probably um, deepens the uh, loner feel there. Unless it's part of a knight's in arms society. What is, what is one of those, Ben? The knight's, knights Templar. It's like a club. It's like Dungeons and Dragons, I believe, but more medieval. There are shots during the news reports and things like that about his apartment, and he had stockpiles of food, which basically looked like he was prepping for the end of the world. It had lots of spam. No. You guys do your spam? Do you mean like junk mail? No. I think I've seen spam in your cupboard once before. I don't think you have. <sighs> spam mail? Is that an American? You're the only meat eater in here. I am, so, I mean, of, of any of us, it's probably going to be me, but mm. can't say that I've had it. Do you want to know a secret? You ate meat yesterday? No. Today? today? I had tuna today. Jesus. Yeah. Sorry. Claims to be veggie. I really craved it and it was delicious. Pesky. He also had a collection of weapons with a wide array of guns and swords. So swords and chainmail, that all makes a lot of sense. Completely irrelevant story, but I'm going to get into it. In the village where I come from, which is a very harmless village, not a lot goes on there. If it's crime, it's usually, I imagine, burglary or graffiti. There's a story once where some people had a bulletproof vest and they essentially wanted to test it out. So someone shot the other one and it killed him. That, there was a, something very similar set of circumstances on, I'm sure a police officer, there's a YouTube video of like a, a guy testing out, a, oh no, it's with a knife, stab proof jacket and the knife goes straight through. Oh yeah. In the back. yeah. But I think we've all seen that picture of the armor recently with the cannonball that gone through it. Well, what, what, they, what were they saying? Just things like, I think the, the original tweet said hit by a cannonball. Injured, wasn't it? Or yeah, something injured, like that, yeah. yeah. It's like injured. Well, well not, not to be linked to the fact that I'm the only meat eater in the room, but my dad used to work many, many years just after I was born at a slaughterhouse. Well, a lot of killers come from slaughterhouses. Yeah. Um, um, one thing that he kept in, uh, in the middle drawer next to the fridge for years and years and years, I never understood what it was, was a chainmail glove. But apparently the slaughterman had to wear chainmail gloves for, to stop the, pig, the pigs from biting through the gloves to their skin to take their fingers off and stuff. Jesus. So my brother put it on and punched me. <laughs> yeah, it hurt. You try and bite him? Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> Maybe. Wearing a lot of fingerless gloves lately. I feel really? like the Undertaker when I'm putting them on. Along with his obsession for swords and guns, he was also very fixated on one of his neighbours who was Lauren Giddens. Lauren and McDaniel were previously classmates studying law together. She was five years older than McDaniel, him being 21 at the time. So yeah, they basically lived in the same kind of complex. You know, she was she's very just kind of pleasant to him. If, she, if he said hello, he would say, she would say hello back. But other than that, there wasn't really a lot going on there. It, it, from Lauren's perspective, but I think McDaniel kind of got very attached and saw there's more to that relationship than there was. Lauren had been a neighbor for him, as I said, many years. He asked her out on numerous occasions, but she politely declined, as she said she was already in a relationship with David Van Diver. Occupation? Van Driver. 
No, it, it's just no. he drove a small car, smart car. But Daniel's obsession with Lauren began to overtake his life at one point and he decided to take things into a much darker place. He fashioned a spying device made up of a camera taped to a long stick to look inside the windows of her apartment. He also took pictures and videos of her leaving and, and coming back to her apartment. Lauren at this time apparently spoke to a friend saying she felt as if she was being followed sometimes, felt as if she was being watched, and she even felt as if someone had actually been inside her apartment. But she didn't take this any further. It's just more of a kind of feeling, and she was kind of due to move from that area. She, she didn't take it to the, uh, the police or anything like that. She just kind of, she felt a little bit uneasy at times. So around this time as well, Daniel obviously started to film, get very obsessed and acting um, erratically. His internet searches at the time showed him look, looking at her different social accounts and also searching phrases like choked and conscious, how long wake up and escape prison. Uh, the interesting thing there is he's also already planning for being caught, which is a bit peculiar. So they're studying law as well. So obviously he'll have a bit of an idea in terms of if he was to get caught, exactly what would that would entail in terms of the punishment, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So on the night of June 26th, 2011, at 4.30 a.m., McDaniel entered Lauren's apartment using the master key he had used many times before to enter pro her property. He was wearing a mask and gloves. So basically, he nicked this master key from the apartment kind of block and he was able to enter any of the, any of the, um, the buildings there. And he entered the room where Lauren was sleeping. Lauren awoke to the sound of a creaky floorboard with McDaniel stood looking down at her and she unsurprisingly let out a scream. He grabbed her by the throat trying to choke her, just like he was googling. She managed to scratch his chest and face and put up a fight. Lauren pulled off his mask and allegedly begged him to stop, but McDaniel was able to overpower her and eventually strangled Lauren to death. He then dragged her into the bathroom and placed her into the bath. He then left the flat for a short period of time and came back with a hacksaw. He would then use this hacksaw to dismember her body. He then dumped her body parts into the rubbish bins behind a building on the Law School campus and then put her torso into the bins of the apartment complex. He flushed her fingers down the toilet. After a couple days with none of Lauren's friends hearing from her, they became worried and decided to check in on her. They went to her apartment complex and McDaniel actually offered to help them have a look around and they used a spare key which they found to get in. Perhaps this was McDaniel thinking, if I walk around looking for them, if any of my DNA shows up afterwards, it's a, you know, I can say that's the reason why, but they were kind of a bit shocked to find that her wallet was still there, the keys and things that she wouldn't leave behind. And they became very worried. Her car was also still parked outside, which didn't suggest she's, you know, she's run off or anything like that. She's also due to move out of the apartment shortly afterwards. So it didn't make sense of any sense of her being away. So after calling her and getting, getting no answers, um, they contacted her family. Lauren said actually drove to Macon to file a missing persons report. Her mum was due to get a flight later on in the day and her sisters dropped off her mum at the airport, but when they received the news that Lauren's body was actually found, they went and picked her up again. They said, We quickly made this decision to go pick her up from the airport because we didn't want her to find that news out on her own, by herself, flying there. So telling her the news that her body was found really sticks out in my head. So basically, yeah, the body's been found. There's lots of, like, TV coverage now, lots of um, press, um, and as there was no witnesses, the police began to question everybody, and the story was beginning to receive lots and lots of coverage. During this time, McDaniel deletes his search history, obviously not well enough to be completely disregarded. And he was interviewed by WGXA News and he was playing the concerned neighbor. But we'll play a little bit of that clip now. Yeah, Lauren was my neighbor. Um, we're just trying to find out where she is at this point. I mean, no one has seen her since Saturday. I mean, the last time anyone heard from her was an email that she sent out and I mean, no one's heard from her since. So actually in the interview, he actually finds out that the body has been found which makes for yeah. very interesting view. And he's quite chilled out in, in the earlier on the clip. He's, you know, he's acting very worried and he's, you know, who really wants to find her. He's just, a, you know, he's acting like a concerned friend would, essentially. He, he kind of bigs up how much they were friends when like her close friends didn't really know anything about him either. But then, yeah, once he finds out the body's found, he, he's, his actions change drastically and we'll play that now. What about um, in the like the parking lot area? I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Um, body? Had you heard, any, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? Alright. I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if it's the same person or not. So that's how we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Are you 
So it was argued that his reaction was to do, you know, it was, it was genuine shock and panic. As you can imagine, if it was your friend and the body's been found, you were, you would act as if, what the fuck, and you would be kind of, you know, overcome with emotion. But he's also at this time processing the fact that he could be caught, you know, this could be, this could be him if, it's, if it gets pinned on him. And as well, he's trying to portray to the media that how they're devastated he is. And he actually takes a little bit of a seat and kind of walks yeah. away from the camera there. So the police interview him. Obviously, they're interviewing lots of people this time. He or if he towed the line still of how they're friends and she, you know, she's very friendly and he doesn't know where she would have gone. And when last time he saw her was a while ago and all that stuff. And after the police examined the, the news, they thought it was quite interesting behavior. And they went on to search his apartment. And apparently he was very shifty when they're searching his apartment and apparently drank 10 bottles of water and was sweating profusely when they did that. I don't know how small those bottles of water were. Could be those little plain bottles. Yeah. And then that's a lot. I reckon I could do 10 in fairly. Yeah? Yeah. Challenge accepted. Stephen McDaniel, big old afro. I can't work out what I'd be more terrified of. Stephen McDaniel in a mask or Stephen McDaniel without a mask. And also, that's not really going to hide his identity. I think like a little ski mask. No, it's an afro of his just like unruly hair. It's Stephen more like does. curly, long hair that just goes out a bit. So when they were searching his apartment, they found hard drives with hundreds of photos of Lauren and videos inside and outside her apartment. They also found her underwear, a package of, for a hacksaw, and numerous weapons. When they were interviewing him, he said he was a virgin and he knew he was waiting for marriage before he wanted to lose his virginity. But they found lots of condoms in this house. Just about to ask you that. So yeah, when the police found the condoms, they were questioning, why would you have condoms if you're waiting for marriage? Obviously, love can happen in an instant. Didn't he also say he was um, just trying to be wicked, hygienic, and posh? Not that I saw. Okay, maybe I'm self-reflecting. No, just assuming things. <laughs> because why else would he? It's me. No. Well, sounds. Could no. Yeah. Let it out. Well, don't let it. If you do, clean it. So they asked him about the condoms, and he said he had stolen them from neighbours. And this was enough for them to detain him because he's been thieving. So they took him in for to further question him. And this is where the infamous video comes into play. Obviously, he knows now the body's been found. He's been brought into the police and they found these things. And he's, he's feeling very nervous. And there's a real contrast between how he's acting in the news report. It's kind of stages, really. In the first part of the news report, he's acting very, you know, concerned and he's concerned. And then he finds out the news and he's shocked. and he's but he's still panicking. very articulate. Yeah. He's got a lot that he has to say. And then in this video, he comes in and he seems to be like in a trance-like state. Yeah, is he pretending or has he actually had a psychotic breakdown is the question here. Uh, we'll play some of the, uh, the footage here. Uh, you came down earlier tonight, me and you talked, all right. You don't have any weapons on you, do you? Yeah. That's just you are. What's wrong? You know I'm Detective Patterson, right? Yes. Do you remember? Put your hands up here. You remember us talking yes. earlier tonight, right? Yes. You remember me earlier in the day? Yes. When we came down here and talked a little bit and then we left? Yes. Okay. I need to know about this girl right here. You know her? Yes. Who is that? Lauren Giddings. This is the, the one piece of interrogation footage where I, I was like, if I was the interrogator in that situation, the bit when they have the stare down and JCS analyzes the eye contact. You try and kiss him. Sorry? You try and kiss him. Him? I don't think he's really my... Why are you saying him? Who else is I talking about? I don't know. There was, didn't the lady drop off some more little bottles of water? And I'd be like... No. You try and kiss her? Well, I don't know. Well, I'm just, no, I'm just trying to give no. an alternative option to kissing Stephen McDaniel. A really, really tall man did. Oh, right. Well, still even then probably would kiss him rather than McDaniel. But McDaniel's the only option here, but... JCS analyzes it and he's supposed to maintain the control of the interrogation by maintaining the eye contact. And it's the creepiest thing I think I've ever seen in, in terms of an interrogation where he's just like... And the guy backs down. And he ever, yeah. Yeah, from the footage we've shown you, he's staring him out. The cop usually should be sitting, like, enclosing him into the space, staring at him, taking control, being the very kind of dominating character. But this weird, like, trance kind of, you can tell it unnerves the policeman. Are you on the prosecutor side or the defense side? Prosecutor. So you on our side. <laughs> right you never worked on the other side no um it's very uncomfortable behavior and they question him about why he's changing so drastically yeah he kind of goes into a bit salad man vibes yeah yeah and he's all abe a little bit of abe i don't know <laughs> it's kind of more more steven than abe i don't know who's salad man 
Salad, salad fingers. fingers. Oh. Oh, salad fingers, just checking. Oh, Daniel. You got me there. Did you say salad, man? Yeah. Did. Dumb. Oh, silly bugger. <laughs> Big annuary. Fish eating. He's a confident interrogator anyway. Like he's got a he's not a good one. I wouldn't rate him very highly, but he's like, Steven, come on, mate. Steven, Steven. That's pretty good. Is it? He does the whole hair thing. This is DNA. <laughs> Steven. Do you want a fucker? He said something like that as well. And he was like, No. That was good, Steven. No, I don't know. No. He doesn't really help himself here. And another cop comes in later on. They're doing the kind of good cop, bad cop as well a little bit and getting very frustrated with him. But obviously with the evidence they found and all the photos and the DNA and all those things like that and obviously for the body, but Daniel didn't have a leg to stand on in this case. He would actually go on to plead guilty in the court and in exchange for removing the death penalty. As he was studying law, he represented himself, which didn't go particularly well. I think it would be a hard case for anyone to... Yeah. Turn up to court in a suit of armour which was strange. J-mail. So he was sentenced to life in prison and will not be eligible for parole until 2041. Other evidence that condemned him was blog posts he had written about his hatred to talk towards women, as well as listing the violence and torture he would like to inflict. Incel. Getting those vibes. Getting those Big vibes, time. definitely. Incel with a penchant for spam. Nice thing to come out of this, which is a hard thing to, to kind of yeah, gain from this, obviously a young woman's life being taken away and she was very far on into a law degree. But the Association of Women Law Students at Mercer Law have started to do an annual run in her name, um, a memorial run, which will also benefit the scholarship created in Giddens' name. So her name will live on through other students going there and studying. But yeah, very, very sad case. She was very like polite to him, very yeah. nice. <clears throat> Probably a lot of people weren't. She, and she took the time to kind of be nice and yeah. It's, it's, very, it's a very sad case and just very unnerving as I said if you watch the clips and when yeah. you know what he's done it makes for hard viewing there's that kind of mugshot photo of him that they took just after they'd interrogated him and mm. just imagine being sat across the table from that didn't she also have like she was in a relationship wasn't she or yeah. she had been with like a much older gentleman mm. and she'd been out on trips and while she would go out he would go in her, her apartment and yeah. just yeah he took things took photos and he also yeah, oh. stole underwear and things like that so if she backed her sixth sense a little bit more in terms of having that feeling of being watched feeling yeah. of people being in her space obviously probably the, she was thinking I'm moving soon fuck all this I'll be away from all this but sadly it was too late uh, one thing I was going to say we don't usually do look likeies but him then and him now it's like Sideshow Bob and Sideshow Mel very different but the same very tired eyes but yeah, that is the case, the creepy case of Stephen McDaniel, uh, requested by Georgina Rosa. Thank you once again for that request. Big thank you to all the uh, new and old Patreonies. We see there's quite a few more people popping, yeah. popping on by. Yeah. Obviously, and uh, thank you for the lovely reception we've got for announcing the new series. The first episode of Series 5 is going to be a week on Monday, um, which I've just worked out is the right Monday. Yeah. So very excited for that. Um, very excited to see what people think. And uh, yeah, overwhelmed by the response. People have been very happy about seeing uh, seeing the return of the boys, haven't they, Dan? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a big thank you to uh, Phil Whitten for making that, that uh, picture there. We're also going to be, I'll uh, reveal it because we really like the design of it. He's kind of mocked it up into a bit of a m film movie poster and we're looking to kind of get some prints of that made. So do let us know if you'd be interested in um, that, if we bring that as merchandise. Uh, we also are, I've mentioned it many times, we are gonna have, we have other bits of merch that are going to be coming out soon, hopefully. Um, so keep an eye for that. It's a horrible feeling, isn't it? That um, sensation of knowing a presence is about or knowing someone's watching you. Like the Stephen McDaniel case. I thought you were doing that as if... Just chatting. Because the other day, right? Oh, okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> right, come on. My dad was out. <laughs> So the other day, uh, it gets dark early now, like four or five o'clock, and um, it's been cold as well. So back down in Cambridge now, walk my dogs after work, come to this bridge. There's one one uh, lamp, lamppost above the bridge, and it's well lit. Then you've got three options to, to make your way back to the house. You go the creepy narrow corridor, but you can see the whole way up the, the path to the top of the road. You go the residential housing estate way, which is all well lit, or you go back along the river way, which is pitch black. I usually go straight up the straight, well lit, narrow path, but it's not residential. 
because that's quickest. But someone was coming down, so I was like, okay. Don't want to go out the residential because there's not enough things for my dogs to piss against. Um, well, the rest way. of the walk. Well, they pit, they just piss every 10 seconds. They're very territorial. A bit like that. Um, Don't like that. No, you don't. Just, well, this is my beer now. Do you like, piss everywhere? <laughs> it mm-hmm. Smells like it. So I walk in a, uh, along the river, pitch black, get about halfway through, and I, I realize, right, because it's quite nice to walk without the torch on and just be like, okay. I suddenly feel like someone's either walking towards me or behind me, and I've got the dogs with me. So I very quickly, yeah, it's that sort of happened to me. Breathing. Yeah, heavy breathing, heart pounding. And I very quickly pull my phone out, turn my torch on, turn it behind me quickly. No one there. Very quickly go to like launch round and turn it in front of me, scare the shit out of my dogs who both start running because of the light, knock me down. I nearly fell in the river. Then what happened? I nearly fell in the river, fell down the bank. See, how close, and be honest with me here, don't lie to me, how close were you to the river when you fell? Well, it's on a back, the pathway is elevated. Um, I got stung like shit by stinging nettles. The story's getting more elaborate now. Go on. Oh, okay. Uh, I was probably about a metre away from the river, but I'd fell and got very muddy. That's why I'm in new trainers tonight. Six months old, aren't they? Well, they're newer than the ones I were wearing. (laughs) They're fucked. Yeah. So this was all a story about how you're somewhere singing nails. A presence. There wasn't um, a presence. There wasn't a presence. You were I wrong. felt a presence. Um, and by the time I'd got myself back. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I had to let the leads go. The one who lives. Scary. Yeah. It's like the creepy old woman in Leeds. The, um, the one in the park. I told you about that, didn't I? Did you someone just one more past once? No. She sat on a bench <laughs> on her own. She's like the woman out of uh, Home Alone. The pigeon lady. Dan in the Christmas quiz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But leaning down to pick some dog crap up, put it in a bag. Dinner. Yeah. <laughs> and as I'm bending down, I feel my dog's extendable leads go zzzz. And I was like, well, it's like Tommy 1 a.m. Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tommy Cooper. That's quality. Died on stage. Mm. Well, I don't. <laughs> okay. Um, Relatable. I felt them shoot away. I looked up and there's a woman behind me. She'd walked all the way over from the bench that she was sat on by herself and she just went... <laughs> you missed a bit. <laughs> she shut. <shot. laughs> she just went, it's warm tonight. Was it? It was quite warm at the time. Yeah, I was in shorts. Yeah, but like the pigeon lady in your home alone, she was actually a nice person. And I just went, yeah. You gave her half a dove or whatever it was. Turtle dove because of the poo. Yeah, I'm, I'm easily scared. Yeah, it turns out. Easily scared. But yes, thank you very much to Georgina Rowe for that request. Thank you very um, much. Thank you guys for all your support. Hey, Georgie. We'll be back again <laughs> next week with a new Minnesota. We won't tell you what it is yet. They know what it is. Oh, they know what it is. Yeah. He bloody told me. Yeah. Did you tell them? Well, they saw the poll. No, they didn't see the poll. Yeah. The Pajama Girl Murder. What are you grinning me, sir? <clears throat> the Pajama Girl Murder. Still a bit. What is that little? Oh. <laughs> the Pajama Girl Murder. So eerie. Do you want me to say it, eerie? Hmm. <clears throat> The Pajama Girl Murder. Eerie. The Pajama Girl Murder. How do you know? Do you know what eerie. eerie? As in scary. Yeah. You've done raping. The Pajama Girl Murders. But it's just one murder, not plural. The Pajama Girl all Murder. Right, see you later. All right, like we always say. We say this all the time. The Pajama Girl <laughs> Murder. Keep doing what you, uh, what you do. Unless you're doing voices like Ben trying to be eerie, but end oh. up being a bit. Well, not sexually well, aggressive. Oh, that's whispering. The push how we go, man. Anyway, <laughs> till next time. See ya. <laughs>